Hi, I'm Melissa Krieger with Do Yoga With Me. This is a routine focusing on side bending. You'll need a block, and I would suggest, I call this a chunky block or a brick, a pretty solid one. And there'll be a short shavasana at the end, but you're welcome to stay longer if you'd like. I hope you enjoy. We'll begin today's practice in child's pose. You can take the knees as wide uh, or as close together as feels comfortable. Your arms could stretch forward beside you or back, whatever you like best. Start to deepen your breath. Making your inhales and exhales longer. Check in on all those different levels, how you are mentally, emotionally, physically, energetically. Try to welcome it all. Take two more breaths. Stretch your arms forward and then walk them over towards the right side. So reach out to the right. Your forehead, your elbows may or may not touch the floor. Breathe into your left side. Change sides, reaching out while you push back in the opposite direction with your hips. Come on back through to center and then make your way up and towards all fours. Stretch one leg back behind you, land on your toes, and then just push out through that heel a few times. So just giving your legs a little bit of a stretch out. We've been in that uh, flexion position with the knees for a while. And then take the other leg back. Just pressing in and out a few times. Come back into all fours and start to wake up the deep core with your breath. So big inhale, long exhale. Start to work that inner core a little bit more, big breath in. Long exhale plus, pull up on the pelvic floor, back on the low belly. And then keep that action and move round your back, drop your head. And then back into your arching, your spine, a few times each way. Move a little bit more, stretch your arms forward. Push back in the direction of child's pose, but your forehead might not come down. And then inhale, pull back up towards all fours. Exhale, push back. Inhale, pull up. You might bring the spine into this a little bit more. So at the top, you might arch, look a little forward, and then round, push back. I call these moving cat cow curls. A 
some of you <laughs> might make this a little bit more backbendy. Maybe the pelvis wants to drop a little bit more forward. Maybe not. Remember, everyone likes different types of backbends, different degrees of backbends, so it can be less of a backbend if that's a better choice. If you are backbending, your backside is a little bit uh, engaged as the hips push forward. That'll help the hips push forward and you're pulling back on the low belly, pulling up on the pelvic floor. Maybe a turn, a circle, circle to the side, the front, the side, the back. Just see what kind of movement feels best for you. This can also be sort of free form, right? We're just moving the spine, just waking everything up. If you're circling, take a few in the other direction. Come back through to center. And then make sure you're back in that all fours, wrists under the shoulders, knees underneath the hips again. Stretch your right leg back behind you. You'll keep your toes on the floor and you'll stay still. We'll be twisting here. So bring your left hand to your left shoulder and rotate your torso up. And your shoulder might like this best, keeping the hand here resting down, or maybe that arm stretches up. So twisting through the spine, push out through both hands. So bottom hand pushes down, top hand pushes up. Round of breath. Lower that arm down. Big side stretch here and a little bit of balance. Flatten your back foot down completely. So the toes are turning to the right and that foot is fully on the floor. Because this is a little bit more balancey, you might be looking down towards your left hand. The right hand can come to the shoulder and then maybe that arm keeps stretching up. Maybe that arm stretches over. So kind of a sneaky balance here, right? Push down fully with that foot, with the hand, keep using your core, find your gaze point, round a breath. And then lower back down again, back into all fours. Stretching the left leg back behind you. First the twist. Right hand comes to your shoulder, rotate upwards. This is enough, unless the shoulder's okay with it, you'll raise the arm up. There's nothing wrong with keeping the arm down if that's better for your shoulder. Round of breath. Lower that arm down. Turn your back toes out, flatten that foot into the floor. Look down to your right hand, so that's your gaze point. Maybe the left arm reaches up, maybe the hips push up a little higher, maybe that arm stretches over. So a nice big side stretch, as well as a little bit of a back bend here, a bit of a back extension. Round of breath. Release out of it. Maybe coming back to kneel, give your wrists a little bit of a shake out, maybe a few circles. And then you can make your way in towards downward dog, please. Hands a little forward, a little wider. Tuck the toes, press up and back. Staying still or moving for three more breaths. Come on into that standing forward fold. So maybe the feet walking up towards the hands. Slide the hands to the shins, come up halfway, flatten out, and fold back down again. Staying still or a little bit of movement, couple breaths. The hands can come to the thighs or the knees and roll up to standing. Bring up the head, maybe open the front of the body a little bit more. Bring your block up towards the top of the mat. This sequence is a little bit more complex than some of the ones we've been doing and we're bringing in some of our other movements, a little bit of back bending, a little bit of balancing, so you'll use all the tricks that I've taught you so far. From the top of the mat, have a little bit of space in between your feet. Shift your weight over towards your left foot. Bring your right knee up. Take a big step back, warrior two. Bending into that front knee and stretching the arms front and back. Looking over that front hand as long as that stays, as long as that feels okay for your neck. 
round of breath. Change it a bit. Uh, raise your top arm or your front arm up. Bend it back behind you. Flip your backhand thumb down. Bend it back behind you. Maybe the hands can connect, maybe not. Uh, my hands don't connect. It doesn't really matter. I'm still opening through my shoulders, through my armpits to get into this um, bit of a variation on a warrior two. Now looking forward may not feel as comfortable, so look wherever you need to go to look. Round of breath. Change this into reverse warrior so the back hand can just slide right down to that back thigh. Front arm reaches up. Big exhale, wake up your core. Lean back a little bit. So a nice side stretch, bit of a back bend here again, looking where you want. Remember that front knee is opening out towards the baby toe side, that external rotation. Round of breath. Straighten your front leg, bring your hands back to the center. We're shifting into triangle pose. You can shorten up your stance a little bit if you like, or you can keep it as is. Shift your hips back behind you. Reach as far forward as you can. When you can't go forward anymore, you're coming down. This hand doesn't have to go down low. It can be at your thigh or your knee or your shin. Top arm reaches up towards the ceiling. You can look wherever it feels good for your neck, your balance. Two breaths. This is where it gets a little complicated, coming into half moon pose. We'll see how it goes for me. Bend your top arm, rest it down on your hip. Look down toward your front foot. Step that back foot in about halfway, and then reach for the block. The block's in your left hand, a little more to the left, a little bit over towards its own side. Big exhale, wake up your core. Both legs start to straighten, that back leg lifts. Back leg, back foot is super active, like you're kicking into the wall behind you. Maybe the hand stays here on the hip or maybe that arm reaches up. Half moon pose. This is great, nothing else has to happen. Some of you might bend your back knee, maybe your back heel can come closer to your backside. Maybe that top arm can find your foot. For sugar cane variation, take a round of breath. Release that foot. Casually step back in towards warrior two. Take a round of breath, nice and calm. And then straighten that front leg. Turn your front toes in. So now you're long on your mat. And it's actually pretty long here, so if you stretch your arms out, it's like you're trying to line up your wrists and your ankles in the same line, and your feet can be slightly pigeon-toed. Bring the hands to the hips, and then pull your hips back behind you. You're just letting yourself drop into this forward fold. Your knees can bend, your head hangs down, your spine can relax. If the floor is too far away, use a block. Three breaths. Coming out of this, just lift yourself up a little and then you're going to pivot, turning towards your front leg. So you're coming into a lunge, back heel is lifted, back toes point forward, step your back foot forward. Come up halfway, flatten out, exhale and fold. Inhale to lift, push your hands down or <laughs> push your feet down into the floor, stretch your arms out to the side, reach your arms up towards the ceiling. Hands to prayer. Pause for breath. Second side. Drop your hands, shifting your weight over towards your right foot. Lift up your left knee. Take a pretty big step back. Warrior two. Just checking out that alignment with your front leg, toes, knees pointed forward in the same direction. Arm stretch front and back. Tricep stretch, front arm reaches up, bends back. Back arm, thumb down, bend it. Maybe the hands connect, maybe not, it doesn't really matter. And breathe. Mm. 
Reverse warrior, backhand to your thigh, front arm up, big exhale, wake up your core, lean back. Try looking down to that back foot just to see what it feels like with this variation. Remember that there's always a bit more stability when you look down and that can be really helpful for the next couple shapes. Pull through to the center, straighten your front leg, stretch your arms front and back. Maybe that back foot scoots in a bit for triangle, maybe not. Hips back behind you, reach forward and then eventually down. It really doesn't have to be low. What you want to think about more in triangle is that there's lots of length through both sides of your body, both sides of your waist. It can be a little bit balancey here, so look where it feels the most stable. Down, maybe the side, up is not so stable. Bend your top arm, so rest to your hip. Look down towards that front foot. Step that back foot in about halfway. Grabbing the block in the right hand. Block goes a little bit forward, a little bit off towards its own side. Big exhale, wake up your core. Both legs start to straighten, back leg lifts. So this is enough. Or you might start to stack your hips a little bit more on top of each other. <laughs> Maybe that arm reaches up. This is enough. That back leg could bend. You might find that foot, you might not. Round of breath. Let it go. Step back. Warrior two. Whew. Round of breath. Wide leg. Straighten that front leg. Set up your feet. Lean forward. This time we'll keep some length through the spine. So the hands or the fingers or the fists come to the floor or the block. And then instead of folding forward like we did before, you're trying to stretch out in all directions, reaching the crown of the head forward, tailbone back, both feet pushing firmly into the floor. Taking a twist here, you'll bring your left hand more underneath your face. It's still on the floor. The right hand comes to the shoulder, rotate forward. This is enough. If the shoulder's okay with it, the arm stretches up. You're still trying to stretch out in all directions. Round of breath. Lower that arm down. Hand more kind of underneath your face. Left hand to the left shoulder, turn up, stretch that arm up. So I find when I stretch through the sides of my body that I kind of free up the shoulders a little bit more. So this twist and this arm reach might feel like there's a little bit of space. Round of breath. Lower that arm down. Come forward again, back into that lunge. And then this time, step your front foot back to downward dog. Round of breath. And down to child's pose for about three breaths. Push yourself to your seat. You might sit up on support. I find this block for me is a little high. Something flatter would be better, so I'm not gonna use any support, but see what you need. You can bend your left leg in and stretch your right leg out, coming into our gate pose. Take a little turn towards your bent knee, and then the other hand slides down that straight leg, so your torso rolls open a little bit. And then depending on the shoulder, the arm down, up, or over. Top uh, bottom arm kind of pushes into the leg to roll open. Two breaths. Come back up again. 
keep your legs as is, coming into a little bit of a twist. So take an exhale and twisting to the left. The right arm might come across, left fingers back behind you. You're not gonna twist super far. Sit up a little bit taller, maybe glance over the back shoulder. Untwist, change legs. Might walk your hips back a little bit, whether or not you're up on some support. You'll turn to face that bent knee. The other hand slides down the straight leg, roll the torso open. Maybe your arm comes up and over. Come back up again, and that twist, torso's tall, turning towards the right. Look over your back shoulder. and untwist. Make your way on to your back and we'll be using your block again. You'll have your feet flat and your knees bent. Push your feet into the floor, lift your hips up, slide the prop underneath your pelvis. And then straighten that right leg out along the ground. So for some of you, your low back will not like this. And if that's you, please go ahead and just remove the prop. You can do everything else without the block being there. So we're in a little bit of a back extension here. And then stretch that right arm back behind you. If it's better for your shoulder, maybe the arm's bent or kind of stretched out a little bit more. You see what you think. You'll take your upper body and you'll start to wiggle or shuffle it over towards the left just the upper body and you won't move too far. The pelvis stays where it is. Lower body is also going to start to shift over towards the left side. So you're going into this crescent moon kind of shape and you won't move too far. And then once you've got into the position that feels good, you decide maybe both arms want to stretch out. Maybe both legs want to stretch out. Take five more breaths. Last breath. And start to wiggle out of it again. And then pause in the middle, maybe both feet flat, knees bent. Notice how it feels from side to side. Stretch that left leg out, left arm back, round of breath. Just the upper body to the right. Just the lower body, pelvis stays fixed. Not gonna move too far, you don't need to. Once you get there, see what your body would like best. Five breaths.
Last breath. Walk back through to the center. Bring the legs back in too. Pause in the middle. Notice how you feel. Push your feet down. Lift your hips up. Pulling that prop out of the way. Bring the hips down. Right, draw your knees in towards your chest. can stay still here or you might move into happy baby widen your knees flex your feet feet are reaching up to the ceiling knees are still coming down out and wide hands can be behind your thighs shins ankles maybe your feet you could stay still or rock a little bit from side to side bring your feet down to the floor Setting yourself up for Shavasana, grabbing anything you need to be comfortable. This will be a short Shavasana, but remember, you can ignore me and stay resting as long as you need to. Really give yourself in to this shape. Let gravity do its job and pull you down. Let the breath just do its thing. If you would like to stay longer, please do ignore me. If you're okay to start moving again, deepen your breath, wiggle your fingers and toes. Maybe blink a few times. Maybe a stretch, a yawn. You can bend the knees and make your way to one side. And then pressing up. Finding any comfortable seated position. Bring the hands to prayer. Close your eyes, bow your head down. Notice how you feel. Thank yourself for showing up. Thank your body for all its hard work. Open your eyes. Lift your gaze. Thank you for joining me. Namaste.